No, I never tested the original A1, but I tested this one and I can tell you definitely how it sounds. An iconic amp designed in the 80s that make his returns in 2023. But how will stand up compared to the Big Brothers M3SI and the M2SI, both reviewed on this channel? Is the surface really so hot? The phono input can handle moving coil cartridges? Well, hit the like button, take in consideration to subscribe to these channels to keep me motivated to do what I'm doing and let's find out. <laughs> That's my third video regarding the A1. Any products captures this huge amount of attentions like this musical fidelity amplifier. In the first video, we saw the A1 presentations at the High End Munich Show 2023. In the second video, I give it to you my first impressions regarding the A1. And finally, we have the review. It captures the attentions of everyone, YouTuber, professional journalist, in Italian, we say, we like to say, niente è per caso. That's meaning nothing is by chance. The new A1 has a slightly larger chassis compared to the original A1 to dissipate the heat. It's offering a complete discrete class A topology, able to output 25 watt into 8 ohm load with a 25 ampere maximum current output. And Simon Query explained to me, at least try to do it, the ability to slide in class B rather than switch into it. Only when the class A current exceeds to have only for these short times all the current that you need. And we will see later in the review that is able to handle any speaker. Again, compared to the original one, we have also an upgrade of the power supply and the transformer now in a dual mono design. On the front panel, we have now a blue LED instead the red one of the original A1 plus a normal and direct knob here on the front. And many of you ask me about this normal and direct knob because there was an um, error on the musical fidelity user instructions. So basically with this switch, you can bypass the preamp stage gain before the volume control, resulting in a less minus 10 dB gain, but with less distortions. And basically is making the volume dial that you can control with this beautiful, compact, alu, heavy remote control with these big knobs. You can control the motorized volume and in this way it will be more suitable for high sensitive speaker. Volume potentiometer that is an Alps RK series, if I'm not wrong, and you can hear it a little bit from listening positions, but only when you don't play any music contents. I didn't ask Musica Fidelity about it because it's absolutely not a problem for me. But if you have the same things, if you have hear the same things, just let me know in the descriptions because it's something interesting. And as I say, during the music playback, you will not hear nothing. Between five RCA stereo input, the A1 has a built-in phono stage that handles moving magnet and moving coil cartridges with an automatic impedance matching. We'll speak just in a moment about it. Back connections are slightly high, so big fancy power supply cable could touch a little bit the surface. Something to take it in consideration. And no, it's not fancy. I purchased it by eBay and you can find Akuface on it. I don't know why, but I paid something like 50 bucks and it was really good. Why? I just want to look more audiophile and have fancy power cable. Regarding the designs, I have to say that it is hypnotic to my eyes. I just love it. Sometimes I'm there looking the amplifier and think how stupid I am because I find that it is Stuff. These gears look really nice, but it's like that. I really find it really, really vintage and beautiful. Also, the feeling when you press the power knob is just wow, a vintage feeling that I really love. It's absolutely a satisfying touch and unique. But now let's move to setup. I test the A1 with first with the Sonetto 2, the Sonetto 1, but also the ELAC DFR52 and the Project Box 5 S2. In my opinion, this last one is the speaker of the year. Check the review because it's something unbelievable. As source, I used, first of all, Streamer DAC, the H and Q. I know it's something expensive, but I want to 
just feed up something really 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 high quality and after i switch to the wim pro plus that just arrived to me did they hear any difference switching from the h and q reference duck to a more affordable it looks like a apple tv right or Yes, I have to say that the Win Pro Plus reviews coming is a really affordable and good product, but the H and Q was giving me more spaciousness and a more refined with more, a lot of more textures. So it's nice to see that the musical fidelity A1 is a resolving amplifier. I forget, I also pair it with my Rotel CD Elf Tribute. So I use also the CD input same things i could hear the difference from h and q and streaming music with cobats that had much more resolution compared to the rotel cd elf so take it in consideration that is a resolving hub something really positive It's a class A amplifier, that means it's run hot. But how much hot? I measured the surface temperature with my infrared camera that I had to purchase for this review and are pretty expensive. I was reaching something around 40 degrees after 10 minutes, 53 degrees after 30 minutes, and a final temperature between 65 and 68 degrees on the surface after one hour. So it gets pretty uncomfortable by let my hand on it if you i can let it for two or three seconds as you probably saw in the first impression video but in the same time compared to my class a tube amp the master sound do a venti that was reaching 220 degree and it's really strange because do a venti that in italian meaning yeah 220 and was reaching 220 degree yeah found it something strange and really the master sound can change the temperature of your room the A1, absolutely not. You feel it just when you are closer with the hand in these positions. But in any case, neat space, as the designer engineer said, absolutely not inside a rack, it need ventilation. Back on speaker, if you saw my first impressions video, when I pair it with the Sonetto 2 and the ELAC DFR52, beautiful speaker i have it here since long times so i have to review it designed by john williams no andrew jones <laughs> and the a1 never had any problem to play with high volume i have to say this because it's really important i could reach 85 decibel without any problem i have a 26 square meter room it's not big it's not small and it just play loud with a lot of bass the fr52 ilac are coming with a lot of bass the sonetto 2 has a big woofer and i took out a lot of bass also in dance and electronic music without any problem both sonetto 2 and the fr52 can reach 42 hertz and both are coming with 87 decibel of sensitivity so for sure was not an easy test and here we have the first comparisons with m3 si and m2 si that are coming with more watts and i could feel the difference when paired with such speaker where the m2 and m3 si they will just giving this start and stop speed this control on the bass where the a1 was struggling a little bit of course only in complex music passages but this doesn't mean that the a1 can handle such a speaker and really i was impressed how well was handled it without any audible distortions playing loud powerful and with a lot of bass was the m3 si more controlled absolutely yes was the m3 si more articulated on the bottom end absolutely yes did i enjoy the a1 in dance and electronic absolutely yes all this for saying that you can pair any speaker but if you are looking for precision then probably such big speaker like the elac dfr52 will match better with the m3 si or m2 si where the a1 instead was delivering an incredibly good flawless musicality but we'll speak just in a moment about it 
Back again on speaker, I switch it to a more easy to drive and compact speaker like the Box 5 S2 and the Wardell Evo 4.1. I had also in the past Triangle Borea, the 03, I had the Q Acoustic 3030, but I sold both and I keep the Wardell Evo 0.1. Not because it was a superior speaker, actually I found the 3030 from Q Acoustic superior, but was more interesting with this AMT tweeter that in my opinion need a good matching amplifier. Well, I found the A1 a really good match with it because this AMT Twitter, it could enter in the sibilance territory really, really easily, but it never happened with the A1. Nice to see it, that you don't got this sibilance or too bright treble presentation. I never hear the Wolfdale Evo sound so good. I wish to have the A1 during the Wolfdale Evo review. And I'm not finished. The Wolfdale Evo is coming also with 87 decibel sensitivity. It's a 8 ohm speaker and it can play on the bottom end something around 60 Hz, 64 if I'm not wrong. In any case, I was hearing some infrasonic note, I'm not joking, that I never heard before coming out from this speaker and not because the bottom end is emphasized, just because it's highly extended. For example, in this track, the Promenade, beautiful track, a huge soundstage and I could hear for the first time infrasonic notes coming out from the small woofer of the 4.1. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So it's neutral on the bottom end, but highly extended till the infrasonic. I never heard anything like that before. And in the end with the Box 5 S2 where I really, I found the magic coming out from this amplifier. And if you saw the review, you know how much I love the Box 5 S2, but let's move to some quality to break it down. So an extraordinary extension of a neutral bottom end is only one characteristic. What makes the A1 so unique in his category is this liquid and smooth mid-range. Mid-range that is velvet on voices, is velvet on the top end, combined with harmonic richness, it has delicacy, nuance overall. Sonically, I never heard before anything like that. The flawless musicality is effortless. This type of reproductions, it will let you forget about the superior dynamic of the M2SI or the M3SI, for example. It's highly transparent, resolving, detailed, without never being too bright, aggressive, fatigue or analytical. Soundstage is huge for the price range. Center imaging is pinpoint and holographic between the speaker, never forwarded. It's definitely exciting, delivering an incredibly spaciousness pictures, crispy clear with the magic combinations of harmonic saturations and a balanced timber, resulting in a never fatigue or too airy experience, rather a really engaging and unique one. It's a cocktail of sweetness, smoothness, delicacy, a warm feeling that sounds incredibly pleasing to the ears. When I turned it on for the first time, I was, ah, what's that? Really, female voices got the sweetness they deserve without never compromise the authority of male voices that are delivered faithfully and with presence. If there is an instrument that I really love, listen it through the A1, are string instrument and especially acoustic guitar. Guitar plug is extremely detailed, like in Chris Jones long after you are gone. Acoustic guitar is just next level. Someone said that it's like a red wine. You turn it on in the night and you just enjoy it. I put a little bit of jazz music and I'm really in another planet. Listening for Coltrane say it, the sax was shining in the room and I was impressed by the cymbals decay that was a touch of delicacy as I never experienced it before. The sense of timing of the A1 is remarkable, is something really outstanding. It has definitely a distinct sonic coloration that lean on the warm side of the tonal spectrum, extremely pleasing to the ears and to the eyes also with this beautiful vintage looking. Delicacy and grace will rewarded with a wonderfully engaging and emotive presentations that will make you cry when matched with the right speaker. Okay, probably not cry, but it's really something unique. Mm -hmm. 
The first table that I test with the A1 was the Orgon Audi TT4 fitted with the Artophone, Artophone Blue 2M, a beautiful turntable, affordable. And I remember I spent this Japanese pressing of Altered Jazz and a superb press. Japanese press are always good, no popcorn feeling compared to German press. And on this LP you can find a lot of instruments but also a lot of vocal sections that were really airy, clear and holographic and I really enjoyed it through the A1. I switched it to a second moment to something more funky like this Candy Dwarf where I have this crystal clear music on vinyl and sound really really good. Sax was smooth, warm, drum was tight, overall a great funky vibe. And on side 2 there is this track that is called, if I remember well, Gear Shoot stack or stick together, where sax and vocal were shining in my room, in a explosions of sensuality. I really, really enjoyed the moving magnet phono input of the A1, so I switched to a moving coil, you have this knob on the back, you just push it and you can connect your moving coil cartridges and I connected the Dual CS 518 fitted with the Denon L103. Another beautiful cartridge but is coming with a really low output voltage. And here noise floor was slightly more audible compared to the moving magnet setup. I spin Stevie Wonder and the sound was incredibly warm and smooth. But I had to push the volume almost to the max, something like that 70, uh, 80, 85, almost 90 percent to get a good amount of volume. And definitely the A1 was out of the comfort zone with these cartridges. So I decided to pair it with an external phono and I picked the cheap iFi Zen phono, also review available in the description. Also here a slightly noise floor coming from this beautiful cheap pre-phono and this time with the external phono that was doing let's say the dirty work with the A1 that was magic again. And as final test I moved to the project RPM9 fitted with the Sumiko Blue Point 3 Low. I turned everything on and the noise floor was pretty cleaner compared to the dual Denon setup. And I played one of my favorite records finally arrived from Greece, probably you saw my post on Instagram, Diary of Dreams Tavros Lancias, where we can find also Lars Danielson on the double bass. Beautiful, beautiful record that I really enjoy on the A1. And this time I had to push the A1 something like that. At 50% to reach my moderate listening section SPL. Noise floor during the playback was almost inaudible from listening positions and overall I really really enjoyed. So in the end I can definitely say that it's better to go with a moving magnet cartridges or a moving coil with a high output. Like for example the Sumiko Blue Point 3 hike. I didn't test it unfortunately, I hope to do it in the futures but Definitely not with the Denon DL103 and low output voltage cartridges. Something to take it in consideration and I hope that this test that I perform will help you to choose the right turntable setup. Of course, if you don't want to go with an external phono preamp. The original A1 designed by Team Paravicini, also if I didn't test it before, was about bringing a warm, sweet and smooth valve sounds with a solid state designs to a reasonable price. And I can see that the Musical Fidelity team was able to do this with the new A1. You recognize that it's a unique and special amplifier when you want never turn it off. His ability to highlight the main subject in any musical content really captures my attention. It's highly dynamic, it has enough power to drive any speaker, no, it doesn't. I need a careful speaker matching, but it's the most pleasing amplifier that I heard. During Musical Fidelity presentations, Mr. Lichtenegger, Musical Fidelity owner, says something that I very agree with. It sounds so wonderful that you want to have more. But that's unfortunately not possible. There is some limits in the level. You always want more and more. And I'm sure in 30 years, when maybe we will see another upgrade of the A1, those who bought these amplifiers will be really proud to own one. From it out is everything. I hope you 
enjoyed this review as always hit the like button take in consideration to subscribe to the channels too keep me motivated to do what i'm doing and see you soon